We're here with Jan Yeldmacher from Sprint Business. Jan, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I'm always excited to talk about 5G. Um, one of the things that you mentioned at your BCE keynote was about the low latency society. It's yes. an interesting way to sort of uh, succinctly summarize what's yeah. going on with 5G. Yeah. What, um, first of all, t let's talk about what happens with low latency. Um, what, what, what actually changes from the network side? Yeah, now look, I, I think we are all used that the next generation of uh, wireless networks increase the speed of the network. So this is something that is learned over the time. Everybody expects that, so 4G to 5G will increase the speed by a factor 100. Right. But I believe it's much more exciting um, that the latency is, uh, is decreasing. So we will be, we have much more, um, you know, much less time between, you know, the, 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 the signal being sent and the signal being received. Mm -hmm. And that is important to create a, a variety of applications. Just if you think about autonomous application, autonomous, autonomous driving, right. remote, uh, remote surgery, and all these things, they require low latency that you can work as if you were there. And uh, that is the exciting thing. And that's why we say we create a low latency society. I, I really appreciate the point about as you were there because it, 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 it really is, um, in, in your keynote, we talked about the response time for vision, for touch, for, mm -hmm. for things that we do when we are physically somewhere and we're getting to that point, or we're, we're, we're really close to getting to that point yeah. in the network so that something, can, so that the uh, machines between here and there can respond that quickly. Um, what, what sort of applications does that enable? You talked about remote surgery. Are there others that, you, you, uh, that, that uh, businesses should be looking forward to down the road? Yeah, I believe everything that, uh, that uh, works re remotely and autonomously will be supported um, through 5G. But I think the most uh, exciting example is uh, robotics. If you, if you remember the pictures that you see from uh, automotive uh, manufacturing sites, you see the robots in an assembly line assembling a car yeah. uh, in, a, in a repetitive way, very fast, but you never see people interacting with the robots. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that the latency that the networks today provide do not allow that humans and machines work hand in glove because the latency of a robot today is too slow to work in the same reaction time that the human uh, person works in. Now if you, if you apply new networks, you allow robots and humans work together because they have the same latency, they have the same reaction time. And that you know, creates a variety of new applications that uh, will come soon. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it literally enhances just about every um, uh, you know manual job that we absolutely. could be doing, and then you add the possibility of being remote to that as well, and it really does sort of open up some creative new ways to solve problems in the business right, world. Right. Um, speaking of the business world, I mean, your sprint business after all, um, you, you've talked a lot about um, solving the, the, the mega trends uh, and sort of keeping an eye on these mega trends for your um, uh, for your clients. What are those trends and, and how is Sprint sort of reacting to them? Yeah, I, I believe you can probably narrow it down to three major trends that all of our customers are facing. Also, we ourselves are facing these uh, challenges. One is the, uh, the permanent change in the workforce. So we have many generations now working in one workplace. Mm -hmm. It is four generations today. Soon it will be five generations. Just think about uh, how technology is adapted by different generations and what kind of problem that uh, produces for companies to work in a, in, a, in a flawless environment, in a collaborative environment. Second uh, trend in the, in the changing work, work, uh, workforce is that um, uh, you have, uh, you have uh, people from all over the world working together. Mm -hmm. So again, yeah. it is not necessarily true that people sit in the same office working on the same thing. Right. They may be completely remote. Third thing is that people are uh, more and more being self-employed. People are not working and not on the payroll anymore. You have up to 50% of people being self-employed in large corporate environments. Mm -hmm. So big changes that IT, telecommunication services have to deal with in corporate environments. Second big trend is globalization. Um, mm. uh, money is uh, 
flowing around the world and seeking seeking opportunities and you know money goes where the return on investment is the best right. and IT yeah. and telecommunication uh, uh, departments and decision makers have to deal with that challenge because they need to be flexible they need to be available they need to be there when the business needs to be there right. and you need global network infrastructures to uh, to to enable that and and sprint brings that to the table and last but not least digitization digitization uh, has the quality to either help you to reduce cost or to disrupt your competitors. Mm -hmm. So both things uh, need to be enabled and in order to enable them, uh, Sprint Business consults their customers on that digitization journey. Okay, um, that, that's a great way to sort of sum it up and that, that's, it really comes down to, you know, where you are in the world and where your network is and how, how fast your network is, how lo low latency it is. So in, in the path to 5G, um, Sprint's made a, a, a bit of noise about how it's, how it's got a lead or it's going to lead in 5G. Can you walk me through how, how close it is now and what, what the near future looks like? Yeah, we will, we will launch 5G as the first operator in the US. And when I say 5G, I mean the true mobile 5G. Okay. Not any fake you know, application that you put uh, the words 5G in front or behind mm -hmm. of. I talk about you know, a device that is traveling, that is connected with a lower latency, with a hundred times higher uh, capacity and speed. And we will launch that at the beginning of the next uh, year mm -hmm. in 2019. And we are enabling um, our network to, uh, to be a 5G network by, by rolling out a massive MIMO antenna technology already today that supports 4G, but also 5G. Okay. So a massive MIMO antenna that we use today on, based on the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum mm -hmm. has about 128 antennas built into the one box. And we reserve 50% uh, of that space for 4G densify our network as we speak, and then switch on the second half of that antenna that supports 5G. That's why we are much faster than everybody else. Okay, uh, Jan, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate the conversation. Thank you very much for having me.